Mondays. It's an open forum where we talk about some everything. Hopefully, you saw the, the opener. We talk about religion, politics, relationships, whole nine. It's everything. But we talk about it from a man's perspective. So, uh, listen, I want to let y'all know this is interactive, right? So, comments, you got comments, you got questions, you got things you want to say. We are looking at the comments online so if you want to make a comment if you want to share something we're paying attention we can bring into the conversation too but it's for everybody it's man talk but it's for everybody who wants to join in you're free to join in so we just gotta let y'all know that up front how you feeling tonight man i feel good man i just want to uh, let everybody know it is man talk but we do uh it's for everybody and right. women don't be getting over here trying to take over because we ain't having it <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to be in the kitchen cooking anyway. So, <laughs> hey, that's a side to point. That is a side to point. So, I'm good, man. Ready to get ready to get into the nice topic, man. Um, this is gonna be a good one. All this right, so one. let's jump into it. Tonight's topic: What we're talking about? We're talking about marriage and the pursuit of happiness. Now, let me just go and say, I know everybody saw it. Everybody know what's going on. Whether you like it or you hate it, you did notice it. The whole thing that's going on with Will and Jada, you know, because they are public figures, people pay attention to it. You know what I'm saying? They say, hey, man, just leave them alone. It's kind of the price you pay for being a public figure. But needless to say, they put it out. Red table talk. Red table talk. So Will and Jada have this conversation about an entanglement that Jada had I don't know what that is, but okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and it's it's Will, I mean, that Jada had with this young cat named August Alcina. But some things stuck out to us that we just wanted to just kind of. Well, the, the first one was it should have been called Endanglement. Endanglement. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sir. I'm, you... I'm, I'm ready tonight. I'm ready tonight. <laughs> I'm ready to die. <laughs> but yeah, the real real was a little upset, man. He was as much as they tried to put on a good face. I don't know if it's being married, but you can read between the lines. You can see that things ain't quite as happy and on board and high five and like things ain't as cool as it may seem like what they put out, but. One thing that did stick out was the reason behind what she said. She the reason she got into her entanglement was this whole thing about where she said it was a long time, it had been a long time since she felt good. So she was <laughs> I know you better <laughs> so boy. So it just causes us to think, well, you know, because in a marriage, people become unhappy at points. You wrap ups and downs. So we just want to see what what is it about this whole marriage thing and happiness? Are the things even compatible? You know, you know, man. The, the, I guess the crazy thing about it is, 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 and again, we are. When I was watching, I kept helping thinking. I feel, I feel sorry for them because they made something that was private public. Yeah. And because they've done that, okay, perhaps what can we, what should we be learning from it? And the first thing that I learned from it was you don't want your business in the, you don't want everybody in your business, number one. Right. And because, because I think with, with, with every man, with any marriage, mm -hmm. with any marriage, that's good and bad. I didn't know there was a such thing. I thought they were just marriages. But with any marriages, man, they're going to be peaks and valleys. 
They're going to be some. Sometimes you got the gun trying to shoot. Some other times she gonna have it. But <laughs> in a marriage, you are gonna split between who gonna have the gun, and who gonna shoot. Right. It's gonna go back. It's gonna go back and forth. And the longer you be married, because and I think you, man, you said it best. We had we were having a conversation the other day, and you said this. You said it best. You said, and the longer you get married, the more difficult it is because you're not the person were when you first entered the relationship you want to kind of expound on that you want to talk about something how well, i think people forget we're dynamic men and women we're dynamic as we get older as we grow we don't but we, we change we evolve some for the good some for the bad you want it to be positive but just because time is going on things are happening with time maybe you said i wanted to be at a certain point in your job by this time mm -hmm. and you're not there um, or maybe you hit there before you you know before you said you really wanted to so you either high or you low or you know just different things so emotionally you just got a whole lot of things dynamics that are happening and you got two people mm -hmm. it's one thing to deal with it by yourself but you got two people that you got mm -hmm. to make this thing work and i'm gonna say one thing i don't know if people in a marriage do if you are the person that's okay do you really give the other person space not to be you know what i'm Whoa. saying wow if, if, if you can say man things are, I'm, I'm cool right now thanks can you really say okay let me check and see if that's the same thing on their end yeah but most of the time you don't have to check and see if they good you know I, I know just as good when the missus is in a good place and I know when she's not because she lets everybody know that she's <laughs> not in a good place. I'm I'm so serious. I feel you, you do not you do not have to wonder whether or not your spouse is in a good place because if it's a him, he's gonna let you know he's not in a good place. And right. I think and, and if you and if and if you can be the person that's in a good place, because oftentimes I find myself in a good place, oftentimes, uh -huh. more often than not. And if I and I'm constantly looking to kind of see where she's at, because man, that that happened that happened me to does this because the same thing, the same thing can make you happy one day will be the thing that make you cry the next day. So good. did you hear that? Did you hear how I just came? Oh did you yeah. Hear how I yes, Bro, sir. I, I heard it. So right. That is that is the truth. So that happiness is funny, man. So I'm constantly watching when when I'm in a place to where I can watch. I'm constantly looking at her to make sure she's happy. I can always, man, listen because I want her happy. I'll get there. Yeah. But I need her happy. I need yeah. her happy. I you know, I heard somebody. Her thank you. I heard somebody say one time. He said when he first got married the thing that attracted him to the woman was how independent she was how you know what i'm saying because he had his own thing going so he's like he don't want nobody that's going to be a distraction so she was moving and shaking so he was fine he's like perfect but now it's like i need to wrangle her in and see because she gone she gone she gone but you know what i'm saying so the thing that drew you to him in the first time you know what i'm saying is that the thing that you like about him now how do you deal with that dude i had a girl uh when i was in high school she was fine i'm brother i mean pluck out pop pop put up pow <laughs> but see the, the, the problem was she knew it and that attracted me to her because she mm -hmm. knew she was bad and she was and somebody was always in her face that attracted me to her yeah. well the longer i stayed with her I want to choke her about that because somebody was always in her face because she knew she was bad. So I'm, I'm and man, and that just, and, I'm, and you know what's funny? Because we need to watch that. You need to watch that because that thing will turn on you. I got to poke the bear right here because here's the thing. Was the attraction of her really about her? Or was it about if I, if I tame this big bad thing right here, boy, what's that going to say about me? Well, you know, what, and you're, I think you're right. I think you are absolutely right about that. I think because throughout the relationship, I remember constantly, constantly being like, yeah, yeah, this me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this me. And she was smiling just as hard as I was. Yeah. Not at me, but <laughs> at every, at everything else. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Boy, I, and, and I think that's something I really think that's something that we need to take more serious because, man, again, it's, it's as quick and as simple as that. Yeah. What I love about you today will be the reason why I'm running from you tomorrow, man. man brother, brother. So that leads us to our first question. Can you truly handle who your spouse is? And I mean, their fame, their power, their failures, successes, all that. Can you really handle who that person is? Well, let me say this. And, first, and again, I want to say, hey, guys, feel free to jump in on the live comments and, and let us know what y'all are thinking. Uh, because I'm going to let y'all know what I'm thinking. So <laughs> uh, can, your, how, can your spouse truly handle the fame and the power of success? Back? Okay. Now, no, I think there is a... There should be a criteria that says when your spouse makes such and such hundred million dollars, million dollars, and you're not bringing much to the table, there is a certain amount of stuff that you got to put up with. Now, listen, ladies, I, it ain't fair. No, it ain't fair. It ain't fair for the men either. But 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 I, I can't be I can't be more honest about this. If you think you're gonna walk into a relationship with he cleaning, you're gonna have to put up with it. You're gonna have to put up with him being the, the guy that has all of the money. You gotta put up, you gotta put up with him if he's the guy that has all of the fame, and vice versa with the woman. So it really takes a special person. When I first started doing comedy, my wife was perfect. Perfect mm -hmm. for me when I first started doing comedy. She could be about on my arm. You would never know she was there. She would be on my you knew she was there because you saw her and she was bad. But yeah. but other than that, people was, I mean, brother, she was perfect for what I was trying to do. She was perfect for it. Right. And, and I think you got to marry people. And man, this is going to sound funny. Let me know if you don't agree. You okay. got to marry people for where you're going and not for where you are. You know what? I was thinking about that today. And I think so often people get married because they're trying to solve a problem that's present. But they're not trying to, they're not looking. Broke. Down the broke. road, the broke right. <laughs> broke. I, know what I, mean. I mean, just all this stuff broke, lonely. Uh, yes, yes, everybody else married, so you know what I'm saying. I need to jump in with everybody else, uh, yes, yes, you know, just yes. the whole nine and all the wrong reasons. And so, when people do that, they just don't consider you are locking into something long term, and they say, Don't ever. What they said, a perm don't don't put a permanent solution on a temporary problem. Yes. Don't try to exactly. solve a temporary problem with a permanent solution. That's it. Yes, that's what it is. And a lot of people do that when it comes to marriage. Well, for most people, marriage is just a serious relationship. But marriage is so much more. <laughs> it's way you can't just say take somebody out. I'm breaking up with you. No, nah, you can't no. do that. In marriage. No. Especially once there are kids involved. If the oh. kids involved, then it gets really tough. Because oh, most, because most of the time we got most of most most of the time we have kids involved before we get married. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's really it's really kind it's really crazy. Then man, I just I just don't know if we can ever be in a relationship to where if we have issues and problems that we are gonna help each other solve them. And the reason why, because both of us, man, both of us are bringing issues into the marriage. And it's really, it's really important that we try to help. Now, it's, it's fine if, if, if the missus can help me, can try to help me become a whole person. Uh -huh. But that's really my responsibility. I really need to do that for her because I can't add nothing to the relationship if I'm incomplete, if I'm, if I got issues, if I'm, if I'm battling things from other relationships and from my childhood. I have a responsibility to my marriage to say, John, you need to be fixed. Yeah. Not even not even fixed, but you need to work. You need to, you got some issues that you need to work on. And, and you need to take a personal state, personal responsibility in doing that. And I know women love to say, yeah, girl, you should have met, you should have seen when I got a hold of them. But then once I got a hold of them, I fixed them. I straightened them right out. Listen, go on with all that. <laughs> Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't fix nobody. You can't fix nobody. Or change a man. You can inspire him. That's good. You can inspire him. 
He can look at you and his love for you and his desire to be with you can be so great that he will make the changes. He will fix the things, but you cannot fix him. Let me just put that out there now. Women, settle it in your head now. You don't make a man. You don't yeah. make a man. No. Men make their own minds and make their own decisions, but there are stimulus that we look at. What? And, and, and you, you, your question was, can you handle your spouse's fame, powers, failures, or success? You really got to be the reason why you have to do self op, self observations because don't the only way you can deal with somebody else's fame power failures is you got to be good with who you are because yeah. if you have if you have issues trying to find yourself and you looking at this guy that has met or this woman who have clearly found themselves and prospering it's going to really be difficult for you to function as a man or a woman because man, we are such an insecure. We are so insecure as human beings. We are so insecure. So, so it's important. And the reason why we're so insecure because we don't take time enough to 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 get ourselves right, to to work on ourselves. We don't take enough time for that. Right. So, when I think about this question, I'm going back to what kind of prompted this. Will and Jada. One thing that stood out to me was the the person that the guy that she was messing with, mm -hmm. he was broken, yes. he needed help. Do you think that that whole thing was more about the entanglement or was it about fulfilling a void of, I need to be feel like I'm, you know, important to well, somebody? Well, I, I think it's a combination though, D. I think it's, I think both of them were broken. And I think that's one that's something that people are missing. Mm -hmm. Jada and August were broken. Thus the attachment. Mm -hmm. Broken. You spun it because because two you mean you said this, you said this a couple of weeks ago. When you have something in common with somebody, it attracts you to them. Yeah. It yeah. attracts you to them. And I think they were broke, they were both broken with the similar issues, mm -hmm. which heels were cup heels were covered, her up uh, no, uncovered. Hers were covered. You couldn't see hers because right. she was the one supposed to be. I'm going to help you. Well, then when it when it broke down, when we get behind the covers, now right. we realize that both of them are broken. Because let me tell you something: if you're not broken in some areas, you that would have never happened. It wouldn't have never came up like that. Yeah, it wouldn't. You, I'm just trying to help him. But now remember, I had never felt good. I had never felt good like that. So so something's wrong. In how are you trying? Right. To help somebody when you got issues you need to be helped with. Right. But if you're this nurturer, you need to you need to have somebody who needs you. Will you the wrong dude. Will probably not that dude. Will that dude he gone, he's already told you he's programmed to run through mm -hmm. any pain that he feels to I mean to just keep moving. So he's not looking for that. Oh woo woo. You know, I, no, he ain't looking for that. But if you but need, why we play that position? Why? He just he, he doesn't put out, he doesn't put himself out like that. I'm put that. He, I'm pretty. All men need encouragement and all this type of stuff. But he doesn't put himself out like that. But his career is, you know, has been on an incline for a long time. Her career hasn't necessarily matched that. But but there, but. How is it that we are that our parents worth two hundred plus million dollars and we're not happy? So you mean to tell me money don't solve happiness? You mean to tell me hmm. that your kids' kids not gonna have to worry about money and y'all still not happy? Hmm. Well, that's simply because you trying to find happiness in somebody or something when you need to deal with what's inside of you. Right. Right. So we want to know, how do you define happiness in a marriage? Y'all help us out. Talk to us. Let us know how what you think about this. How do you define happiness in a marriage? How do you know when you have? I can I, I, I can I can stand you. I can stand being around you. You make me smile. I enjoy your company. Oh. 
And but you know, but I, and I think this is the problem. I think we. I'm trying to figure. We got the money. We got money. Mm -hmm. We got money. We got we we we're not stressing out with money. We can enjoy each other and enjoy things. We're in a good place. And I and I think people people miss miss mistake being in a good place for being happy. Hold on, working on the happiness question. Yeah, I think she answered the question that we were talking about previously. In that okay. So you okay. Just up, so. okay. I'm gonna stop looking. I'm gonna let you look at it like this. Okay. I, but I, I seriously, man, I think I think that we mistake some some things for happiness. Because if I were to say, well, you ain't gonna never be happy in no marriage, people say, oh, you lie, you lie. I, I think you can be happy, but I think there's gonna be a level of contentment. I think, I think if you can find happiness in somebody else, no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. If you can find happiness with somebody else, knowing that you're making them happy and them you, I think that's more or less what happiness is. You, you just said a word that make you said content. What's the difference between content and settling? Well, there is a difference. There is a difference. Contentment is content. Who is been okay. <laughs> I said I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah, he's reading the comments. Okay, you know I'm gonna get it off. I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna take it off. Man, I'm gonna let you read. I'm not gonna read. I'm not gonna read. Okay, so you said the difference between contentment and compromise. Compromise. What was it? Contentment. And settling, you know, okay. like, I ain't gonna settle, I ain't gonna settle, but at some point, contentment you have to have contentment. So, what's what's the difference? Well, settling when you settle for something, you know, in your heart that you better than this. Not now, not really better is not the word. You you know, that's not really what you're looking for in somebody, but you like, well, this the, the, this is the best thing right now. And so you settle for that. You settle for that particular person, and uh -huh. say, "Well, because I, I don't have the patience. Everybody else get married. You know, I want kids. I'm getting old. My my clock is ticking. You know, and I, I think that's more or less what it is. That's that's when you settle. Because normally, when you settle for somebody, the next, the, the whatever you're supposed to be is normally right down the street. All right. So Selena said, "What respon Whose responsibility is it to provide happiness in the relationship?" Who's responsible? I think both people, both parties are. I'll put all hands on deck. All right, because I'm not, I'm not going to put it on that woman. I'm not going to put on that man. I'm going to say it's everybody's responsibility to make their selves happy, to find happiness within that self. Now, I'm going to try to help you be happy, and I will hope that you would do the same with me. I would hope. But if not, I cannot allow... I cannot, I cannot be here if you're not making me happy. I mean, not be here. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I cannot depend on you for my happiness. You now, you being here, hopefully that will make me happy, but I can't depend on you to make me happy. Because when I married you, I said, oh my God, when I had first seen you, it was like an angel that came from heaven. Yeah. So, Saw you. I'm just saying. <laughs> I said, "Oh man." Uh, so, I, so, but again, I would, I would say this: it's, it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility as much as it is hers. You know, I heard a guy say one time: people are happiest when they're growing. Hmm. And when they can notice that they're actually growing, I believe that. So, but. Do we put the responsibility for growth on the other person rather than putting it on ourselves? And if we put it on ourselves, how do we work it out with the other person if they're not on the same page? Oh, um, oh, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some conversation. People are people chiming in. I'll make, sure we, <laughs> I'll make sure we get it. All right. So, so Pia said, she said, "I think happiness is about understanding and patience." Hmm. Uh, standing in patience. Um, let me see who else. She also put in in my marriage, my husband is the head and I am the neck. 
Girl, gone with the bad self. He respects me <laughs> knowing that I respect him. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That respect okay. factor. That's, yes. That's true, That's, yeah, that is. That is. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. It is. We got Tarsha. Tarsha say, I agree. Happiness is growth. Now, we were talking about a minute ago that people are dynamic. The same person you marry, that's not going to be the same person 10, 5, 10 years down the road. It's not going to be the same person. But are they growing or are they, what's the opposite of growing? What's a good word? De decreasing. decreasing, I guess. But, decreasing. <laughs> that wasn't the word I was looking for, but okay. All right. uh, but because, <laughs> because, as much as people would like to stay the same, because of time, there is no way you can. Mm, that's true. You have to that's keep true. crazy. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep trying to evolve at least. Um, but you want it to be for the better. Mm -hmm. You want it mm -hmm. to be for, for the sake of something that both of you guys can share together. You're growing together. You may not be growing at the same time, mm -hmm. but because you're growing you can at least understand and respect their pace of growing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I agree. I agree. I, I think there is there is a there's no feeling like when you two are growing and accomplishing things together as a, in, in, a, in a marriage, as a marriage. There's no greater feeling than we could look at. Man, when we first got together, but we had two niggas were up together. <laughs> and after, when I, because most of the time when we get into marriage, it's, it's really tough. Yeah. And after a while, after after some years, you can look back over five to ten years and say, "Oh man, wow! Well, look at us now. We got we all, we got a home, we got a car. You know, we got we got we had we in a good place. Our lives are in a good place. And because I think I think because of our undisciplinedness, a lot of times and early in our marriages, us, us, us make up for some of the struggles that we have in our marriages mm -hmm. in the beginning. In the beginning, yeah, yeah." So Sophia said, if you're doing it together, it will reduce conflict. Right. Okay, so, so who is Sophia, number one? Sophia, Sophia? Sophia, one of my own girls from Gramlin. Shout out to GSQ, baby. Oh, Lord. Every baby. week. Every Straight week we got somebody in Gramlin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Graham fam in the house. Yeah. Right, right. It will reduce conflict, but it's not always happening at the same time and sometimes so so what happens if the growth of one person begins to intimidate the other or put undue pressure on the other person well, you, that's, yeah. the, that's the thing about marriage it shouldn't now i'm not going to say it shouldn't put pressure on it's supposed to but i think rather than putting pressure on me i think it's supposed to inspire me like you said earlier it's supposed to inspire me to want to be better and want to do better. It's you know it shouldn't. Oh my God, I got to do something. I got no, no. But but because you, when you sign up for marriage, you're telling that other person, I'm going to be the best that I can be. I, I need to pack with me there. I need to pack with me. You're telling that person, I I I'm going to be the best that I can be for you right. and, and you for me. You know what I'm saying? But what but, if they interpret it like that? Let's say, because let's say. Your husband, he been laying on the couch, he chunky, and he but he didn't tell you, but he's hey, like, whoa, whoa. I'm tired of tired, I'm tired of trying to tie my shoes and coming up breathing heavy. I'm tired of all this. I'm tired. And he said, you know what? I'm about to get it together. And he just starts working out. He started hitting the gym and everything. And and so now he doing this. Now communication is not where it needs to be. Let's say it's not. What does that typically, how does that typically come across to the lady? Well, if he's not, well, I guess one of the things he has to want to, uh, I'm speaking out, I'm speaking up for the Chunky Brothers. He <laughs> has to, he has to, uh, first of all, he has to be one to get in shape for him, for him, but for his wife. Mm -hmm. Because, because everybody wants to be, you know, we all remember what we used to be, me more, more so than you. I remember what I used to be, how I had her down my back, how I was like <laughs> six three. Take a cap off. Had, <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm speaking up with Chuckie Brothers. I remember how I was all tall. I remember, listen, real talk. I remember that. 
I remember that. But I want to be, I want to be appealing to her. You know, the worst thing that happens sometimes, my wife, she likes to rock. And when it comes on TV, he got muscles where they don't belong. There's no reason for you to have muscles up here. It don't do nothing good to have no muscles up. You don't need muscles. What do you need muscles right. up there for? But that's right. not where I am. So, and she really, and I see how she really, ooh, rock, rock, rock. And I'll be like, I could be like that if I, if I don't really want to. But in the subconscious, I'm thinking, you know, I probably need, it, I will feel better about myself if she would too if I got in better shape. You know what I'm saying? But I got to do it for me. I can't do it because of her. I got to do it because of me for her. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. I, I think we got to prepare the spouse for the change that's going to happen because what if the change brings more attention than, you know what I'm saying, they're ready to handle? Whether it's a new position that requires mm -hmm. more of your time. More uh, money. More she money. make more money than you. Right. We, like, we like the comfort of the paycheck, but now my time ain't what it used to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's that fine. And I think that's probably the thing about communication. I got to get you ready for what's about to happen. Or now if this is my dream, this position, you know, I've been working towards this and it's about to happen. Did we really talk about what it actually looks like before it actually happened? So basically what you're saying, are we talking enough? Do we talk enough in our marriage? Do I, like Sophia saying, do we have to, we have, and this thing about marriage is, we cannot allow our marriages to go on autopilot and say what well, he should know or what she should know. No, no, you got uh, to talk about it. Say that. that for the people in the back that didn't hear you. Say that. Say that. Do I do because after after you married up for a period of time, we we get comfortable with each other and we think, well, I don't need to talk to her or him as much as we used to talk. He'll just know or she'll just know. Well, I'm gonna tell you now. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, women. Hold on. We don't know nothing. <laughs> we don't know nothing. You better tell us. Right. You better tell us. Right. Do not expect me to be no mind reader. Do not expect me to know what's going on. That your signs, subtleties. I ain't picking up on none of that. You better tell me. You better talk to me like you did when we first got married. You better continue it and let me. And, and let, let me say this. I'm going to constantly ask you, are you good or what's going on? When I see something wrong, I'm going to ask. Like you, like you're going to ask me because we should curl about what's going on with one another. We have to, we have to do that constantly because my my biggest concern is how you're doing. I want you happy. My life's commitment is to, to, to you signed up for me with, to keep you happy and make you happy as much as I can. All right. So, so my producer that's passed me something. It's real good. I want to read it real quick. It said. My wife's not producing y'all. Oh, man. Put it out. Right. So it says, I used to think that communication was key until I realized comprehension is. You can communicate all you want to someone, but if they don't understand you, it won't reach them the way, the way you need it to. So I don't think people communicate and check for understanding. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Now, oh, let me say this. And Sophia, we're going to have to get her off her. Cause she's about, <laughs> it's not about mind reading. It's about paying attention. Well, first of all, we wouldn't have, listen. When you got the kids, and this is for men as well as women. When you mm -hmm. got kids and life comes in, we have to make sure that we're spending time with each other to talk to where we can pay attention to each other. You can't be talking to me in passing. You can't be talking to me uh, when you when you when nine other things going on, you think I'm understanding what you're saying. Don't be giving me no hints. Don't be <laughs> don't be talking to me about no pay attention. You better tell me what you want me to know, just like I'm expected to tell you. The worst thing that can happen, you say, Well, I thought you knew what you mean you thought I knew. What do you, what, what you mean you thought yeah. I knew? You yeah. tell me, make sure I'm paying attention. You let me know when your mama coming. <laughs> you make sure I'm paying attention when your mama coming. So how are you going to tell me that you... So, because it makes sense. You remember on the Cosby show, you remember uh, Cliff and Claire, she used to ask him questions about important dates he's supposed to remember. And they become, well, you yeah. know what I'm saying, he get a headlock or something like that. It's something about women where they want you to have this intuitiveness with them just be in tune on this level like 
when you ask the question, what you want to eat? They said, I don't care. You know what that's about. I'm going to see how well he know me, see if he can figure out what I really want to eat. Well, first of all, don't even get me started with the eat thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why? Why are you lobbing the ball up to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Because really, I, I want this. This is good, but this there's one thing in particular I want to talk about. Okay. I want to talk about. I want to make sure we got time for this. All right. I want to talk about when when we know people. How much? How much of this is because of our parents? Is the way we? Is how much of these issues are coming from our parents? How much is the reason why I can't get right is because, okay, so one of the things I do with my daughter, I understand that my daughter has an attitude. She kind of spicy. And it's, and it's partially because that's how I am a lot of times. Uh-huh. And so before she get before she, when she's, while she's dating, I'm telling her, sweetheart, because you, because you like me, this is what you have to be careful of because you like me. And I'm just curious, how many parents are telling their kids, hey, baby, because, you know, my parents, what my parents got divorced at an early age, but if they had been married for 30 years, yeah. would they have told me the truth about marriage and how you have to compromise, how you have to put up with this, and, oh, yeah, your mama was like this or your daddy was like that. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because I, yeah. I, think, I, think pro- I think that's the problem a lot of the times that we don't, that we don't, that we don't give our kids what they need. For example, if, if uh, <laughs> we don't give our kids what they need. If, yeah. if, for example, if I know my daughter's going to have a quick mouth or a quick temper, as a father, I need to say, baby, you got to be careful in your marriage. You got to right. be careful when you're dating because people are not going to want to do this and they're not going to do it. We got to help our children. We got to help them be better. How many of us are in these marriages Dragging stuff that came from our house that our parents should have dealt with us about, and they never did. Yeah. How, how, talk to me, D. Talk to me. Somebody talk to me. You, you know, they said one of the biggest mistakes that young couples make is for for people who have married mothers and fathers that have stayed married. It says they try to have financially, they try to have the same thing as their parents without considering. That their parents took a long time to come mm-hmm. to like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think emotionally, sometimes kids see their parents as they are now, because by the time they came along or, or at least became aware of their parents and their relationship, they probably had worked some things out. But at the beginning, they probably had some knockdown drag outs that they didn't tell you about. And and and, and, and the through the 30, 40, 50 years. And so, the, but well, why do we have, why do we have knockout drag outs though, D? We have knockout drag outs because you you brought something into your into this marriage that your parents never should have dealt with you. That your mom. Now Tasha is right. We do not listen to our parents. We we watch them, but your parents do not allow you to see a lot of the stuff that they go through. They don't allow you to see it. My daughter, my daughter was twenty six, and she don't know about a lot of the stuff that went on in my in our in our thirty years of marriage, twenty nine years of marriage that we went through. She don't know about a lot of that stuff because we didn't show. Her. But now, when she gets old enough to understand it, we have a responsibility to say, "Hey, sweetheart, sweetheart." Now, I know you think daddy is perfect. I know you think daddy is plenty good looking, and he tall, dark, and handsome. I know you think this baby, but that's not who. This is this is who daddy is. Daddy has made some mistakes. These are the mistakes that daddy made. These are the mistakes that mom made because I think it puts the it puts you in a better situation or a better understanding of what marriage really is. It's like church, man. We don't tell people that you're going to go through once you get saved. We don't tell people that as with married people, just like in church. We got to do a better job of telling people to give, give them 100, tell them yeah. what the real is. Marriage is not a relationship fix. It only increases what's already there. <laughs> if it's hell there already, brother, it's going to magnify once you Put that ring on and say I do. So you do better to clear it out before. Uh, our father-in-law always says the best time to get divorced is before you get married. <laughs> well, think, well, think about this. One of the things that Jada said on the on the deal, Jada said, "I dragged some issues from when I was younger into the marriage." 
Now you've been you've been rich for half. You've been rich for twenty five years since you've been with. They've been married twenty five years. You've been rich since then. And I'm just simply saying there was some healing. All the healing that she trying to do that stuff should have been. Your, you should deal with that with your mom, with mom do. But how, who? Because you acting you acting out like somebody, and we all do. We all do, and, it's, and as, as parents, we need to say, "Say, baby, let me, let, me, let, me, let me let you sit down. Let me let me let you sit. Is that Till? Where y'all have dug Till from? <laughs> so Tia said, "Not married yet, but have experienced the tendency to talk at each other, telling each other what we think the other top uh, think about the topic, without really practicing those checks for understanding. Going back to the comprehension thing. So that's just making sure we." I'm gonna pull y'all in. We don't want to miss y'all comments. Y'all, y'all lively tonight. I'm trying to get well, up. <laughs> we appreciate it. I'm trying to keep up with y'all. So we want to make sure we catch you. Uh, real quick, when Kat talked, she said, as we grow, we have to form our own thoughts and opinions. My mother was never married and didn't have any plans of it. That was not my story. So kind of like me, I, I didn't grow up in a house with married, so I didn't really have. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't. Now, me trying to be smart, what I did do, because my wife's parents were married, I hung around and paid attention. I'm watching. I'm sitting, I'm, I'm observing, because I'm like, if I'm about to go into this, I probably need to watch the people that's been doing it for a while. Right? So I started observing, and I at least picked up enough that by the time we got married, I was a little bit more understanding about it, but which really helped a whole lot. So, yeah. Right. So you, uh, okay, Daryl. All right, so Mark, this is my sister Monica. Oh, Monica, say, <laughs> Monica, say I applaud Selena Fitzroy Smith and how she's handled your position, Derek. I see her being supportive, encouraging your cheerleader, and allowing you to shine. This speaks volumes in your marriage and in your relationships. I think this is vice versa. There are, aren't too many people I look up to, but I truly love. Uh, I truly love the way you two complement each other. And continue blessings to all married couples. Now I will say this: I have, you know, I, I preach, I speak, I get on videos, do all this. That's not my wife. She's not that person. So there's no competition for the stage, spotlight, anything like that. <clears throat> she's brilliant. Mm -hmm. She's smart. Like I said, strike like she's doing now. She can sit behind mm -hmm. the scenes and she can, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we don't have that competition thing, which it's good to have somebody that compliments you. Now, personally, she don't like it, but I feel there will come a time where she would need that spotlight because of the work that I feel that like she's called to do, but it's not threatened by, right? Yeah, in the meantime, she need to be in the kitchen cooking, <laughs> get dinner ready so when you get done, you can, she can see about you, you know what I'm saying? That's just me. Why <laughs> 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 No, but I'm, I'm, that's all I'm saying, and, and I get it. And with most of us, you know, because my parents, my parents wasn't wasn't married as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of a lot of the stuff that I do comes from my mom, and I'm and, and because when we see our kids, most of the time we notice we notice tendencies and stuff in them. Now, because my mom wasn't married, my mom, well, she was married. They just weren't they weren't married but about fifteen minutes. But <laughs> she still she still could have said, "Baby." <laughs> I know I, I'm not, I see some I see some I see I see this I see that this may be you probably need to work on this you probably need to work on that because too many times we go into marriage is blind and that I think dude you should not you should not have to fight like that the first five years of your marriage trying to figure each other out we should have some idea of what we suppose of what we're going and what we're doing when we come into the marriage because it's funny we are so in love when we at that altar and you looking in my eye and i'm looking in your eye and i'm crying i'm saying we just love you so and, 
And after they say, after they say, put the ring on, I now pronounce Mr. And Mrs. Lewis. And it's like, let's get ready to run. <laughs> it shouldn't be, right. it shouldn't be like it shouldn't be like that. No, no, you're right. It shouldn't be like that. But I think that's because people, nobody really puts emphasis on the work that needs to be done up front. Because yeah, yeah. if you're looking for happiness and you get married, you're not going to just find it in the marriage. Happiness is a personal issue that you got to work out uh, before you get married. So well, at least you should. At least you should. At least you should. So I don't know if people really put a lot of emphasis on just being content with your own self. Not to say you're settling, but being content, meaning you you appreciate where you are. You know mm-hmm. it's not your final destination, but you're not so anxious to move forward that you dismiss warning signs, you dismiss important information that's right in front of your face. Well, because and that's you that's good because but we gotta remember this day the work is gonna be done whether you do it in the marriage or right. outside of the marriage. The work is going to be done. You're going to put in the work to get yourself right. You're going to put in the work to make your marriage right because ain't nobody, and this it's not easy for nobody. When I say nobody, listen to me, nobody. Everybody got to pay the price for their marriage to be good. And let me let y'all in on a little secret. You're only going to get out of your marriage what you put in. There you you ain't, ain't no shortcuts. Ain't no often look at Will and Jada. Ain't no often look at Derek and Selena. You're going to only get out of your marriage what you put in. You got to work hard. You yeah. got you know how they had to work on Myra's feet with the, with the chainsaw? It's the same <laughs> thing. You got to work on your marriage the same way because there ain't no short. Ain't no shortcuts with this. No. No shortcuts. So taking on marriage is a decision to take on problems. But if you understand that anytime you're moving towards an, an area of success in anything you do, there are going to be challenges that you that just comes with it. Now, everything in a marriage is not necessary because some people go through a lot of unnecessary mess because they stubborn, they prideful, they, they try to overpower the other person in some shape, form, or fashion, get them to bend to their will. Uh, I am who I am, so they just got to get used to it. No, you got to say, in order for this to work, I need to change X, Y, Z. And you work on changing that. Now, the other person needs to look at it the same way. In order for this to work, I need to change some things too. Well, we don't. And and one thing I learned early in marriage is I can't beat her over the head with 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 what I want her to do or how I want her to be. Mm-hmm. If whatever I want from her, I have to do it first. I, you know, it's funny. I heard that, but I didn't really believe it. But whatever I want from her, I got to do it first. I got to show her, and and the vice versa with her. If if you want, if you want, and and there are, there are ways to talk to each other without talking, that and that's showing. Me. Yeah, just show show me how you want to be loved. Show me, and I'll show you how I want to be loved. Because right. ultimately, man, and I think. You know, they say love, love conquers all. I think if it's done right, if it's done right and told right, I think you can conquer all. Yeah. I think. I yeah. think. But I think one thing people dismiss about love, they think love is a feeling. Love is a discipline. Ooh. It's a discipline. It's, you know, this- <laughs> it's a heartfelt agreement to abide by rules. Hmm. For the sake of hmm. something that's you, something you're trying to achieve, because I keep telling people, love is doing all that you can and never, never being able to decide when it's enough because the other person has to tell you when it's enough. They have to tell you when it's enough. You do it. Let's see. Let's see. Let me say this. Now, if that conversation was had when the wedding at the wedding. If the preacher was up there saying, well, now I want y'all to know the vows and all that is good. But here, let me explain to y'all. Let me let y'all know what marriage is. Because see, we don't get it that way. D. We don't get it. We don't get Hey, let me tell you what you're signing up for. This, let me let me show you exactly what you're signing up for. Go ahead. 
So Lena says, some people are in love with the idea of being married and having a wedding and not invested in the actual and growing the actual marriage. I think she because absolutely they, but you're right, but they're going with a preconceived notion of how marriage is. Because mm -hmm. they've seen they've seen from afar that their parents didn't really let them know the struggles that they had, how they almost left. The parents didn't let them know that, girl, I was five more minutes. If that Negro had to say one more thing, I was gonna whoop it with this fan. Right. You don't get you don't get them conversations, and because you don't get them conversations, and all you get it off of the Cosby Show on TV, that's before Bill was pouring into people drink. You, you, you get all that stuff. You, you just we have preconceived notions because we don't really know. We don't really know. Right, right. But we got to be honest about that. Yes. Gloria yes. Troy, past the glory for y'all who know her, says it's nice to have parents who can share thoughts into your marriage. But at the same, at some point, leave and cleave. Now leave and cleave. She said, at some point, you got to leave mom and daddy, get in your marriage, and get with your spouse and cleave to that person. You can't have one foot in mom and daddy house and one foot at, at home. Mm -hmm. You need to be there with your husband. Be there with your wife. You have to be there because that closeness, being in proximity. Is necessary for getting to know each other. That's true. That's true. That's and true. you got to break off all of the the thoughts and the opinions. You can take the things, the lessons, but the thoughts and the opinions. You, sometimes you got to leave that stuff at mom and dad's house. I, uh, one of the things the comments is counseling is important. Absolutely, Cou counseling is is very important. Uh, counseling helps you guys kind of hone in and figure out some of the issues and some of the things we may need to work on and deal with and get on the same page on because the what what was given what i thought was a given in my in our marriage i assumed that we were going that we both had a plan to raise the kids my uh -huh. way my way <laughs> I, it was a gift i assumed that it, it was just going to line up my way well and she assumed the same thing right. so when we start when we start having kids it was like this Cause, cause we was like, wait a minute, what? but I, 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 I thought, I thought that was a given. I didn't think you had to talk about everything. No, 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 no. You got to talk about everything. You can't leave no, no stone unturned. Nothing can be assumed in a marriage. And let me tell you, my unequally yoked people. When it talks about being unequally yoked, it don't mean it's both of y'all Christians. It right. means are both of y'all being led by the same things. That means you got to see what. What thoughts have mom and daddy put in her head? What thoughts have mom and daddy put in your head that don't vibe with each other? Those things where you're not going to compromise on. Because if you're not going to compromise on it, then it's going to be a constant conflict all the time. If you believe in beating kids like you got beat and they don't believe in that, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. It's, right. I'm, it is funny because... Me, I thought everybody got beat. Well, I they were just going, that was just at my house and not two house. If that was in my neighborhood, we all got beat. But, my, <laughs> but, but everybody don't go through that. And again, and that's one of the things that we don't talk about. We don't, that's one thing that's a giving. Go ahead. Here, here's the problem I see with premarital counseling. Negroes get in there and just lie. Boy, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. Tell the truth when you get in there. Listen. Yeah. That's the way it works. This is not a formality before marriage. Premarital counseling is not a formality. It is a device used to help keep you from making a tragic decision that can not only hurt you, but hurt your family. But if we be honest, is he really going to marry her if she be honest about all the baggage that she got? Is she really going to marry him? If but, he be honest about all the baggage that he got. Because that's that, why we don't say nothing. That's why we don't say nothing. Right. We don't trust. We don't trust the fact that they love me like they say they do and they're willing to put up with me and my baggage. So should premarital counseling come before the ring? Because I think a lot of I think well, a lot of take on and you to put on social media, oh girl, oh, I got a yeah. lot of pressure on to get down the aisle. Now, are you hmm. going? Are you willing to call it off after you just showed out with your ring and your engagement 
video and all this kind of stuff you just showed out are you willing to call it off because in premarital counseling you found out this is a fool and i ain't no way i'm gonna make it with this person <laughs> Hey, hey, before you get the ring, you need to take a lie detector. <laughs> <laughs> Hook them up. <laughs> Lynn says, when you go to counseling, you have to you have to act as though you were going to the doctor. Hmm. So therefore, you must give all symptoms of what's going on, or else the doctor will diagnose you incorrectly and give you the wrong antidote for the problem. Do we know we got problems? Seriously, most people don't know they're crazy, D. Most people don't know they're crazy. Do people know they're crazy? Yeah, that's why they lie. That's why they lie. They do it because that's why they lie because they know they got problems. Okay, touche, sir. Touche, touche, touche. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a problem with themselves, but problems relationship wise. Because sometimes some things they may not even really know is an issue. Uh, and one of the biggest things I see, most people just don't know how to do the communication thing. Hmm. Because and that's what you learn. That's what that's what you learn. Right. Right. Hmm. The pressure to communicate is different than just yeah. a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you and, and you need to take advantage of everything, every opportunity that's given to you prior to marriage. Because as much stuff as you can go through before the marriage, that's less stuff you can drag and issues that you could drag into the marriage. And a lot of this stuff can be handled at of this thing, man. You know, we we dealing with stuff, been holding on to stuff for so long. Because like Tasha said, it's gonna come out. You right, it's coming out. It's show coming out. So if it's not, if you know it's coming, if you know it's coming, why not deal with it at the beginning of the marriage? Right. If, if, if Latasha was fly at the mouth. And I always got some small to say. And I always make her husband want to choke her down. Why don't we just tell? Why don't we just tell her husband that at the beginning? I tried to tell him. He wouldn't listen. I tried to tell him. He wouldn't hey, listen. Hey, but but that 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 bickering and complaining hit a little harder when you ain't got your separate apartment or something to go to. <laughs> you gotta be in that house with that person. It's gonna get a little bit harder, and it's gonna set in. Oh my God, I gotta wake up to this tomorrow if I don't learn how to handle what's going on right now. <laughs> so, going yes. you, man, it's, it's gotta be, and, and think about it. You got people that, you know, people typically look up to, like Will and Jada, and now we see, listen, I don't care how much money you got, how much fame you got, how much you think people have it all worked out. Everybody, marriage don't, it don't care who you are. It don't care where you come from. Marriage don't care for you if you ain't ready. Because it don't. You think it attack? It's not attacking you. It's attacking the institution of marriage. That's yeah. what's being tested. It's not about you. It's about. It's trying to attack the very institution of marriage. And so you and you don't really know what that is until you in it. And you're like, oh, it's way more than this than I thought it was because yeah. you because you meant to go in and get a divorce. That's that's what that's what that's what you don't want. But that's that's what happened more times than not. Yeah. If you're going into marriage just to be with somebody, you're probably gonna run into some issues. But marriage is for building generations. You want to build generations. You want to be the foundation of the tree, the roots of the tree that hmm. four or five, yeah. six generations down, they gonna yeah. say. My great great grandmama, great great granddaddy, this is what they did. We are who we are because of the sacrifice and, and all this stuff. And, and what we say is they had issues, they worked them out, stayed yeah. together, and here we are. Right. Let's make sure we paint the right picture of why mom, why grand grandfather and grandmother were the how they did it. They had they they worked through whatever issues they had, and here we are now. Right. Because they had issues. Yep. You're absolutely right, man. Bro, it's been an hour, man. That has been an hour. Final words before we, before we get up out of here. Boy, I, marriage can be as great as you want to be, man. Like anything else. Just work at it, man. You, you get out of what you put in it. 
You get out of what you put in it. I think it would be for all your married people, please let these young people know the work begins before you get married. Figure out who you are. Hmm. Figure out how to be happy and content with yourself first. Because once you get in, whatever issues will be magnified. You don't want that. Because hmm. you want to go into it for to be successful. You want it to be a success. So we appreciate all of our people. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Love you. I appreciate appreciate y'all for watching, checking us out. Everybody that will look at this later, thank you for watching as well. Thanks for watching, man. We'll catch y'all next week. Next week.